Almighty God, whose name is higher than any other. His name is Jesus. His name is Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. And, and with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, once again a hearty welcome to this Eucharist. As one family we pray to God. As one family we immerse ourselves in our Lord's Passion, Death and Resurrection. Today is the Feast of Saint Denis, the first Bishop of Paris. Happy Feast to all the Denises and a hearty welcome to our sisters to our priests and brothers who are attending this Mass in a very special way to the families over here, spouses, children, grandparents. United, let's pray to God, asking His blessings on us, asking for Jesus to come into our lives, and we begin the sacrifice, putting ourselves in God's presence, asking His forgiveness for our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpassed the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads, to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Can you sit for the reading? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brethren, know then that it is those of faith who are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture, foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preached the gospel beforehand to Abraham, saying, In you shall all the nations be blessed. So then, those who are of faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. For all who rely on works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Curse be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law and do them. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law, for the righteous shall live by faith. But the law is not of faith, rather, the one who does them shall live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree, so that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to Lord. God. Our response shall be, The Lord keeps His covenant ever in mind. Kindly repeat, The Lord keeps His covenant ever in mind. I will praise the Lord with all my heart in the meeting of the just and the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord to be pondered by all who delight in them. Our response, The Lord keeps His covenant ever in mind. Majestic and glorious his work, his justice stands firm forever. He has given us a memorial of his wonders. The Lord is gracious and merciful. Our response, the Lord keeps his covenant ever in mind. He gives food to those who fear him, keeps his covenant ever in mind. His mighty works he has shown to his people by giving them the heritage of nations. Our response, the Lord keeps his covenant ever in mind. Kindly stand as we prepare our hearts for the gospel. 
Alleluia, Alleluia. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out, says the Lord. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, when Jesus has cast out demon, some of the people said, He casts out demons by Beelzebul, the prince of demons. While others to test him kept seeking from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is laid waste and a divided household falls. If Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? For you say that I cast out demons by Beelzebul. If I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore they will be your judges. But if it is by the finger of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed guards his own palace, his goods are safe. But when one stronger than him comes and overcomes him, he takes away his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoil. Whoever is not with me is against me. Whoever does not gather with me scatters. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a person, it passes through waterless places seeking rest. Finding none, it says, I will return to my house from where I came. When it comes, it finds the house swept and put in order. And it goes and brings about seven other spirits, more evil than itself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My sisters and brothers, friends, Today's Gospel continues Jesus' teachings as he is leading us more and more to understand his own person, understand how we have got to live the Gospel. But I want to comment on the first reading on Galatians, where we see very much it's a continuation practically from what we've been reading, and we'll carry on uh, till the the middle of next week with Galatians, brief book. I was saying just six chapters, but it brings out Saul's, Paul's, uh, really emotions, personality. Paul was the church, he had not uh, spent very much time there, but Paul was very uh, concerned because there were uh, there was a division. People were coming to create problems. That happens always in every community, in every good work of the Lord, everywhere. I've noticed also, we will notice it, when things are going very, very well, when uh, the God's gospel is being spread, holiness is being increased, there has got to be uh, the interference of the evil one, the temptations, the uh, a little of a disturbance. See it in your life professional, but even more spiritual. Uh, no saint has had a very smooth sailing to sanctity. Our own dear Mother Teresa, how much she suffered towards the end of her life. Great amount of darkness, where spiritually she shares, she could not sense. There was a time when saints sensed the presence of God, a time when she could not sense the presence of God, a moment of great darkness. But it's also all from 
all the saints, all the mystics have gone through this period, period, uh, purification process, this period of purification, of really suffering uh, to be able to come closer to the Lord. Now Paul has, got the, has experienced this and Galatians he reacts. Uh, we've met him so often when talking about the acts of the apostles and we know the uh, travel he had, the difficulties he had and uh, uh, his, but his great personality and strong personality we experience. I share that with you many times. Now they were saying about him, uh, well, this, this fellow Paul, or Saul, was persecuting the church so much. He must be somebody who is a fifth columnist come among us to create problems. He was not among the twelve. How can he teach? He does not know his, uh, the, the really the, the theology, the understanding of Jesus. He doesn't know. How could he know that? And so they, they created divisions among the people, uh, also saying, therefore, I mentioned over and over again, that you must go to circumcision, you must observe all the laws, the over 300 laws of the Old Testament, to be saved to come to have redemption. You can't suddenly change all that. And we know, sisters and brothers, how Jesus came to give us freedom, freedom of faith in him, adherence to him. What's more important than observing the external laws, I told you they were said uh, uh, Sabbath, manner of eating, socialization, uh, different things. For example, uh, we have it uh, two, two days ago in the, in the first reading, uh, and uh, if you read Galatians, you'll find that uh, Peter, uh, Paul is very angry because Peter was eating. You see, after Mass, they would have uh, a fellowship meal. And uh, Peter was eating. There were Gentiles who were converted, Jews converted. And they were eating like one family. And then they said, no, no, no. You're becoming impure if you eat with the Gentiles. And then Peter withdrew and began avoiding it. Now, Paul said, that is not true. We are one family. Jesus has liberated us from all those rules, and we are in, belong to Jesus and Jesus alone. That's what Paul says. And uh, I've uh, focused on this because uh, I, I think we must have the same spirit of Paul, of understanding that for us to live is Christ. Paul answers all those. He says, yeah, you're saying I'm not an apostle. I'm an apostle because Jesus himself, I've met him. And he spoke to me. We had an apparition. No, you'd be heard that. Then he says, I, I persecuted uh, the Christian. Yes, it's true. But it seared my body how much I have suffered for Christ. And I don't mind suffering even more, for it's a joy to suffer. That I proved my fidelity to the Lord. Uh, speaking about uh, theology, I'm not teaching you, he said at the very beginning of Galatians, what I learned. I'm telling you what the Lord told me. It's not my mind, it's the Lord's mind, and so on. And therefore, like Paul, we must also really adhere ourselves more and more to Christ and Christ alone. The gospel, just briefly to tell you, uh, it's, it, you've heard this gospel before, and uh, Jesus, they accuse Jesus of uh, removing de demons and devils by the power of the evil spirit. Uh, they didn't say that uh, openly, but Jesus read their minds, and therefore he answers them over here and says, no kingdom divided against itself uh, can last. And he says, I am, Jesus says that, see the fruits. Jesus tells us about being united, about the, the principle here in this whole gospel is, which we, one of the principles we can learn, is uh, uh, the end does not justify the means. You can't use evil means for doing a good thing. They were saying Jesus is doing good things, removing demons, but through an evil spirit, through the devil. Uh, it's an important principle that we must keep in mind also. We should never excuse ourselves saying we're doing a good work, but do evil means. Keep in mind, above all, adhere to Jesus. I was saying today was the feast of St. Denis. He was the first bishop of Paris. That's why I mentioned the first bishop of Paris. Missionary sent from Rome to preach the gospel to the French people. He stayed in Paris. And uh, he was a martyr, he lived in the third century, he lived a martyr. He was, uh, they say, tradition says he was beheaded with his companions and uh, thrown into the river. And they recovered his body. And uh, those of you who have been to Paris will have gone to Montmartre. 
the Mount of Martyrs. That's where he is buried, and the whole big basilica over there on Mark is built on his tomb. We pray to St. Dennis also to make us like him evangelizers, spreading the good news, going in uncharted territories, and speaking about Jesus, giving witness to Jesus. God bless each one of you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness for this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, to your goodness we have this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who sent Saint Denis and his companions to preach your glory to the nations and strengthen them for their mission with the virtue of constancy in suffering, Accept today the, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you redeem us. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in goodness you created man. When he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, Dominions adore, powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with the exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. Denis, St. Leonardi, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be co heirs to eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the Father in the words Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom the, the power, and, and the glory are, are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, said your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with your spirit. Soft is a sign of peace. Christ, peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that I should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, 
since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus living in Mary, come and live in me in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your divine will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament with which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass ended. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. God bless you. Have a lovely day. Today is Friday, and uh, I know that Father Godfrey's uh, catechesis and instructions and advice on different matters of psychology and counseling very useful. Uh, today we won't have a catechesis, but I, uh, we've spoken, and I'll, I'll put him on uh, every now and then on a Thursday. God bless you. Have a lovely day. We pray now for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, we touch you today. This bread is your flesh, this wine is your blood, Lord, we touch you today. In dying we live and in weeping rejoice, your presence turns darkness to light. To live is to grow every moment in truth, in faith and in hope. Your presence turns to